Okay, hello uh, everyone. Um, welcome to the Deep Modeling for Molecular Simulation uh, workshop. My name is uh, Pablo Piaggi and I will be chairing the morning session uh, today. Um, I'll share my screen. Um, here. Okay, um, so in this morning session, uh, we will have uh, three distinguished speakers, Roberto Carr, Ling Fang Sang, and Robert Pistacio. Uh, all of them are familiar with the corridors of the Department of Chemistry at Princeton University. Their lectures will last 30 minutes, plus five minutes uh, for questions. If you have questions, please ask them in the Q&A feature uh, of Zoom. Um, if you raise your hand and you, and if we have time, we might be able to uh, allow you to unmute yourself and ask uh, the question directly. I would like uh, to acknowledge uh, that the organization of the workshop has been done mostly by uh, Clarice Gathers, Yifan Lee, uh, and Roberto Carr. And uh, I'll stop sharing. Roberto, if, uh, if you can uh, start sharing. Yeah, okay. I, um, I can uh, introduce you um, in the timing. So uh, Roberto is uh, the first speaker in this morning. Uh, he's a professor in the Department of Chemistry uh, and the Department of Physics at Princeton University. He's the director of the Center Chemistry and Solution and at Interfaces that is sponsoring uh, the event today and is funded by the Department of Energy. Roberto has made uh, landmark contributions to the development of molecular simulation techniques um, that have really revolutionized uh, uh, the field. And he has received many awards. Um, and among them, I would like to highlight uh, um, one of the most recent ones, the 2020 Benjamin Franklin Medal uh, in Chemistry. That's it, Roberto, the floor is yours. Well, thanks a lot, Pablo, <laughs> for the nice introduction. So um, uh, what I will uh, do in my talk, uh, I will uh, give you a, a brief overview of uh, uh, the deep potential method uh, that you will have uh, the opportunity to uh, learn uh, more deeply in the hands-on uh, uh, session of the workshop. So um, uh, let me uh, start uh, uh, by um, uh, introducing the basic uh, um, topics. Uh, molecular dynamics uh, is uh, a uh, very important technique uh, uh, to study um, statistical properties uh, of many body system. Essentially, uh, it involves solving Newton equation of motion for the particle, so classical dynamics for the particle in the system, the coordinate of the particle are indicated by R in this uh, uh, formula. And uh, um, uh, uh, of course, uh, uh, the accuracy of molecular, well, in molecular dynamic simulation, one uh, uh, compute particle trajectories on a computer and the statistical properties uh, are obtained by taking um, um, temporal averages uh, over the trajectories. Potential energy of interaction is uh, uh, the key feature in molecular dynamic simulation because if we want to model realistically a, a given uh, material, uh, the potential energy of interaction must be sufficiently accurate. Uh, now, uh, there are various techniques uh, to do uh, molecular, uh, to, de to derive the potential energy of interaction. Uh, one technique is uh, uh, the ab initio molecular dynamics technique, uh, in which uh, 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 the potential energy of interaction is derived from the quantum mechanical ground state of the electron. Uh, in principle, uh, uh, depending on the accuracy of the quantum mechanical model that one uses, this technique provides the most accurate uh, and in principle exact uh, representation of the potential energy of interaction. But of course, solving even for the ground state quantum mechanical problem is difficult and uh, has uh, 
uh, overwhelming cost uh, uh, for uh, uh, material uh, system in which the number of particles that one has to include uh, is large and uh, uh, therefore one has to uh, resort uh, to some reduced quantum mechanical model. Uh, uh, the reduced quantum mechanical model of choice uh, so far has been density functional theory, uh, which is uh, uh, again, in principle, an exact uh, uh, theory for the ground state uh, of the electron, but uh, uh, relies uh, on some uh, approximation um, in a term that enter uh, the uh, energy functional, that is the exchange correlation uh, functional. Now, um, even with the approximation for the exchange correlation functional, ab initio molecular dynamics is more accurate than molecular dynamics with empirical force field, which is the other big uh, uh, um, um, contender in the, um, um, in the formulation for the potential energy. Um, it is more accurate because uh, 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 derived from, uh, uh, is not fitted uh, to experiment, but uh, uh, it derives from a, a theory that has a predictive power and uh, uh, can describe uh, processes like chemical bond breaking and formation that uh, are very difficult to describe uh, with uh, empirical force field. On the other hand, uh, is much more costly than empirical force field simulation, and that uh, has limited uh, until uh, so far uh, application to uh, uh, studies that involve uh, large material system and that uh, require very long uh, time for extracting uh, good statistical averages. So um, uh, this, uh, uh, this has been, this has remained until recently, this kind of simulation have remained until recently the realm of uh, um, uh, empirical force field uh, simulation. Uh, in the last decade, um, uh, a new approach has been developed that, that uh, consists in using machine learning and uh, artificial intelligence technique to learn the potential energy surface from quantum mechanics uh, and uh, derive uh, a force field that is not uh, fitted to experiment by using some simple form, but uh, rather uh, is uh, truly a many body potential energy surface like the one described here in the equation, but uh, 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 fitted uh, to uh, um, accurate quantum mechanical calculation. So um, uh, this method, uh, uh, this method make possible simulation of ab initio molecular dynamics quality at the cost of empirical force field. One such method, the, the one that we will discuss in this workshop is the deep potential method, which uses deep neural network to model the potential energy surface and other ground state properties accessible to ab initio molecular dynamics, namely to the electronic structure calculation that underlie ab initio molecular dynamics. Um, uh, let me just uh, recall uh, some uh, uh, basic assumption behind the deep potential methods and also um, um, stress some features of the method. One basic assumption is the extensivity. So the many body potential energy surface uh, um, can be expressed, one assumes that the many body potential energy surface can be expressed by a sum of many body atomic potential of finite range. Uh, so phi, is given as the sum of uh, phi i, where the index i runs over the atoms in the system. And each one of these phi i is uh, uh, represented by a function of the coordinate uh, of all the atom within a finite environment of this particular atom. This is a basic assumption. Um, uh, you may think that this is uh, some sort of uh, uh, generalized uh, embedded atom uh, uh, potential method. Uh, 
Uh, so uh, by uh, uh, taking the, uh, in addition to this assumption, there are uh, other than features of the uh, function f that represent uh, the atomic uh, uh, potential. Um, uh, uh, one is that uh, it must be a continuous and differentiable function of the atomic coordinates. Uh, another is that uh, it retains the translational, rotational, and permutational symmetry of the environment. The function f, finally, the function f is represented by a deep neural network that is trained on density functional theory data. And this representation, we call it end to end in the sense that in addition to the requirement of continuity and symmetry, it does not include any ad hoc assumption on the uh, on the way in which uh, 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 the, 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 the potential depend on the atomic coordinate. Well, uh, if uh, uh, all that uh, uh, is uh, satisfied, then one can uh, uh, construct uh, uh, a potential energy surface that has this form and, has re and is represented by deep neural network. And then one can perform molecular dynamic simulation uh, with uh, predictive cup power uh, close to that of ab initio molecular dynamics, but uh, at a cost that is close to the cost of uh, empirical potential. Uh, um, uh, there are extension of this methodology. In the uh, previous slide, I uh, showed that uh, uh, one can represent the potential energy surface. So the uh, uh, potential energy phi as a sum of uh, uh, local uh, potential that still are many body potential but depend only uh, on the atoms uh, 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 within finite environment. Um, there are other properties that are quite important uh, that uh, uh, can also be described with a similar technology. And these are the polarization and the polarizability surface that I uh, uh, indicate below. Uh, uh, in this case, uh, for the polarization, I use uh, uh, the example of water, so a system uh, made by water molecule. And uh, so in the case of water molecule, the polarization, well, in general, the polarization can be written as uh, a sum of dipole associated with uh, the ions. Uh, uh, in the case of water, there are oxygen and hydrogen. I talk about ions because uh, we are uh, uh, only uh, doing, uh, uh, we, are, uh, we are training the network uh, on valence only uh, calculations, so only the valence electron are used uh, in the uh, density functional theory calculation that is uh, at the basis uh, of, uh, uh, of this approach. And so uh, in the case uh, of uh, oxygen, there are uh, six uh, valence electron. And so the uh, oxygen uh, uh, ion have a charge of plus six electrons. They include uh, uh, the charge of uh, the nucleus and the charge of the core uh, electrons. Uh, in the case of the hydrogen, there is only one valence electron. And so they have charge plus one, the ion. And then uh, we have uh, uh, the uh, uh, charges associated to the electron. The charges associated to the electron are given in term of the uh, center, the position of the center of these charges. Uh, and the center of these charges are given by the center of the maximally localized Vanier function. So in this way, uh, and uh, each one of these maximally localized Vanier function in the case of uh, uh, water that I'm uh, considering here, uh, has uh, only uh, um, uh, uh, two uh, electrons, correspond to two electrons, because this is a spin saturated system. And therefore, uh, the, um, uh, when, uh, 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 and uh, so here, uh, this WI is not uh, a single Vanier center, but is the sum 
of the four Vanier center that in the case of water are associated to the oxygen atom. Uh, and so in this case, the charge is minus eight and uh, we call this WI the Vanier centroid. Uh, this is illustrated below. So the maximally localized Vanier electron, uh, Vanier function for the valence electron in the water molecule, and they will be slightly disturbed, but perturbed when we go to the, uh, for instance, liquid water or ice uh, are given uh, by these uh, uh, four uh, 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 distribution here. This uh, is the maximally localized Vanier center asso they associated to the uh, bond pair, so the bond between oxygen and hydrogen, and the center will sit somewhere uh, uh, in the uh, around the middle of this bond, and then we have uh, the maximally localized Vanier functions associated to the lone pair uh, of the oxygen. So we have four centers, here, 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 and here. And uh, uh, we take the average of these four centers. The fourth one uh, here, the uh, uh, lone pair one, is behind uh, uh, the one that we see here. So we don't see it in this, uh, this two-dimensional plot. We take the sum of the four position, and we divide it by four, and we get uh, uh, the centroid that will be a charge minus eight, uh, that is uh, uh, position here. But as the water molecule uh, uh, fluctuates, uh, uh, this charge will also fluctuate. Uh, uh, notice that when we do that, uh, we have uh, perfect uh, charge conservation in the system because uh, all the charges that appear in this formulation are uh, integer charges. So there is no ambiguity in the definition of these charges. Uh, and furthermore, the Vanier centers and the Vanier centroid uh, are derived from a rigorous uh, transformation in quantum mechanics, namely a unitary transformation in the space of the occupied orbital that maximizes uh, the localization of the orbitals. So uh, uh, this is uh, in this case of the polarization. So in this case of the potential energy surface, we have to represent a, a scalar function. In the case of the polarization, we have to represent uh, a vector function, but this can still be done with the uh, neural network uh, as it is done here for this uh, Vanier centroid. And uh, uh, we can also define the polarization, polarizability surface, which is just given by the derivative of the polarization with respect uh, to an infinitesimal uh, electric field uh, when uh, uh, the position, by keeping fixed the, the position of uh, the ions. So this uh, 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 is given by this formula. And in this case, since we have this derivative of this function, with respect to a vector, uh, these uh, polarizability are tensor. And again, this tensor property can be represented by deep neural networks. So that's the uh, uh, kind of uh, quantities that can be uh, uh, represented uh, uh, in the deep potential method. Uh, another important feature of the deep potential method uh, is that uh, uh, it is it uses uh, um, a, an active learning procedure. So, uh, in order to construct uh, this uh, uh, deep neural network representation, the parameter of the neural network. Uh, uh, that are indicated as W in this slide that should not be confused with the Vanier function, uh, with the Vanier center. Uh, these parameters are obtained by minimizing with a stochastic gradient descent procedure, uh, the loss function that is indicated here, which uh, minimizes the difference between uh, the representation of the potential energy surface uh, and uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the one uh, uh, with respect to the one obtained by DFT calculation. And similarly here for the forces that are the derivative of the potential energy surface. Uh, and also in this case, we use also the virial uh, uh, tensor as uh, a, a, an additional uh, 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 property that uh, we want 
to uh, optimize and is given also by uh, derivative of uh, 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 of the potential uh, of the potential energy surface with respect to uh, changes uh, of the cell that uh, 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 one uses in the simulation um, the um, learning on the fly is uh, obtained by essentially uh, 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 exploiting the nonlinear dependence of this loss function on uh, uh, the uh, parameter of the network. Um, uh, uh, the deep neural network representation is a very complex function. An example is given here. And so all these uh, W, A, and B uh, are parameters uh, uh, that has to have to be optimized. And uh, uh, since uh, uh, optimizing uh, this uh, uh, function uh, uh, is done with a stochastic gradient descent procedure, this procedure leads to a, a local minimum in the complex uh, uh, landscape of the loss function. If we uh, 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 so if we start uh, with different uh, uh, parameter, uh, with a different initialization of the network parameter, we will get uh, a, um, uh, uh, a different local minimum uh, at the end of this procedure. So, uh, however, all these different local minimum, if the network is well trained, represent uh, equally well uh, the uh, uh, DFT data. So what we can do, we can uh, uh, exploit these properties of the deep neural network representation and consider an ensemble of uh, neural network that are generated with different initialization of the parameter. Typically, this ensemble uh, is represented by a few models. Here in this example, I consider four models. And uh, uh, we explore uh, the phase space, uh, which means we explore uh, properties uh, with molecular dynamics uh, at the given thermodynamic condition by using, <clears throat> by using the uh, um, uh, uh, deep potential representation. So uh, we start uh, with uh, an imperfectly trained model and we uh, then explore uh, uh, with uh, this ensemble of model. When the ensemble of model gives the same very close prediction within a certain threshold, uh, it means that they represent well the physical property of the system. But when uh, the uh, prediction of the different models start to diverge above a certain threshold, it means that uh, uh, the network is not sufficiently trained for this particular configuration. And so new DFT calculation have to be done in order to uh, improve uh, uh, the network. Uh, this is indicated by the labeling step here. And, uh, 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 and uh, 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 by the training step, and one repeat this procedure uh, several times until one reach uh, um, uh, um, sufficient accuracy. The, um, uh, this procedure is uh, uh, very important because uh, the cost of uh, uh, training a network is large because it is based on uh, density functional calculation that are much more costly than uh, uh, molecular dynamic simulation uh, based uh, on a deep potential. Um, so uh, in this way, we uh, are able to do the quantum mechanical calculation only where they are necessary. And typically with this technique, uh, less than 1,000 of the visited configuration are labeled. And in this visited configuration, one does single shot quantum mechanical density functional theory calculation to uh, improve uh, uh, the training of the network. So this is uh, a, a, a quick, overview of the procedure. Now I think I will go very quickly just by showing some uh, uh, transparency of uh, 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 recent uh, uh, work uh, uh, studies uh, beyond the reach of direct ab initio molecular dynamic simulation 
become possible once we have uh, a, a sufficiently well-trained uh, network representation for uh, uh, the potential energy surface. Uh, and uh, with that, uh, uh, since uh, 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 the calculation with the deep potential are much more efficient uh, than uh, ab initio MD calculation, one can uh, uh, perform studies that would have been impossible with uh, uh, IMD, but uh, are feasible uh, with this technique. Uh, just uh, let me go through very quickly uh, some example. So in this case, uh, 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 we were able to uh, obtain a, a phase diagram of water with a deep potential representation based on the scan uh, functional of uh, uh, density functional theory over a, a, a large range of temperature up to here, up to 2000 uh, uh, Kelvin and uh, up to about uh, uh, 50 uh, GPA uh, of pressure. So uh, you can see the, in the gray line, you see uh, the experimental results. So the experimental result uh, are uh, not uh, exactly the same as the result uh, of uh, uh, the of the of the prediction uh, by uh, the deep neural network but the deep neural network prediction is related to the accuracy of scan i want just to mention here that uh, uh, for instance uh, the melting temperature from uh, uh, of ice uh, uh, to water uh, should be 273 Kelvin. Instead, uh, it is around 310 Kelvin uh, with, uh, uh, with this potential. Uh, one additional thing that I want to say, in this case, in these high pressure phases, for instance, here, uh, uh, one goes uh, from, uh, a, 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 I think I will, uh, yeah, okay. Uh, one goes from uh, uh, a, um, a system that is a standard crystal to a super ionic crystal that is this uh, ice uh, seven second, uh, and eventually the fluid here is an ionized liquid different from uh, the liquid uh, at uh, 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 ambient pressure. Um, let me go uh, move on. Another example. Uh, is uh, we could compute uh, uh, that was uh, work done by uh, particular by Pablo, uh, the uh, homogeneous nucleation rate by using the seeding technique. Essentially in the seeding technique, one uses classical nucleation theory for the rate that is given by this formula over here. And uh, uh, one insert uh, in uh, a, a liquid cell, a cluster, and uh, one let uh, uh, the, an ice cluster and uh, one let uh, uh, the ice liquid uh, uh, equilibrate and uh, uh, until by varying at a given uh, temperature, uh, at a given thermodynamic condition by varying, in this case temperature, by varying the uh, uh, number of molecule in the cluster until one find uh, a cluster that uh, neither uh, uh, melt uh, nor uh, uh, in, uh, increases. And so one get the critical cluster. When the critical cluster is obtained, one uses this formula uh, to compute uh, uh, the rate. Uh, uh, and uh, um, uh, just... Uh, 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 to give you uh, an example here, these are the rate that one obtained. Uh, this uh, green uh, shadow uh, region correspond to the error bar. In the calculation, these are experimental data. Uh, this uh, is a function of the supercooling. And uh, uh, this is the prediction, the green line with this uh, shadow uh, uh, line here uh, is the prediction of, uh, 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 of the calculation. Now, uh, let me uh, just uh, uh, very quickly go to, uh, well, we already mentioned the polarization surface. Knowing the polarization surface, we can study, for instance, a ferroelectric phase transition. And uh, the ferroelectric phase transition was studied uh, in lead titanate recently uh, by Pin Chen Shi and uh, uh, other uh, people here. And uh, uh, 
uh, you can see uh, in the system, this is, a, this is a pair of skite, and in this pair of skite, uh, there is experimentally a first order transition at 763K. Using the deep potential scheme for the potential energy surface and the polarization, the transition can be studied with molecular dynamics. Uh, again, uh, we use the scan functional, the scan functional overemphasize the tetragonality. So uh, in the ferroelectric phase, the, 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 the uh, ratio between the C and A is overemphasized in order to reduce uh, uh, this uh, ratio uh, of C over A to a value that is close to experiment, we apply an external pressure again to correct uh, 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 the error of DFT. And uh, once uh, this is done, we get uh, uh, results uh, uh, that are uh, uh, close to experiment. Uh, here we see how the lattice parameter varies across uh, the phase transition that in experiment uh, occur at 763 Kelvin and in the simulation occur at some uh, uh, value uh, at a temperature slightly higher than 800. And uh, uh, one can see a number of properties, uh, the enthalpy comparison between uh, uh, simulation uh, and uh, experiment over here. This is the uh, heat capacity experiment and simulation. And this is the uh, polarization. You see that polarization dropped to zero above the transition uh, when the system become a paraelectric, uh, it was ferroelectric uh, uh, at lower temperature. And we can see here also the uh, longitudinal susceptibility and the longitudinal susceptibility calculated in the simulation and uh, in experiment, again, uh, uh, quite uh, uh, good uh, uh, agreement. Just uh, one very last, very quick. Um, uh, in the uh, uh, model uh, that uh, um, I introduced at the beginning, I said that the extensivity uh, is a basic assumption of the model. Uh, but uh, um, uh, uh, in some cases, uh, this uh, assumption failed, and one has to include long-range uh, uh, electrostatic effect. This long-range electrostatic effect can be included uh, 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 non-empirically, again, by adding to the uh, local uh, neural network representation the electrostatic energy of a system of spherical Gaussian charges located at ionic and electronic center, which is calculated with the EWAL method, and the inclusion of this long-range effect is crucial in many cases. One example that you will see uh, in the uh, in one of the lecture, in the lecture by Shuni Zhang uh, uh, tomorrow, uh, is uh, the uh, calculation of the static dielectric constant of water. And uh, this is uh, uh, depend on the dipole-dipole uh, correlation. This dipole-dipole correlation with the local representation decay exponentially, but instead, uh, 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 for each system size to reach a constant value and by vary the system size, uh, this constant value should scale like one over L to the cube due to the one over R cube interaction between the dipole. This is essential in order to get uh, uh, dielectric functions that are consistent, independent of the different uh, uh, boundary condition that one uses. Uh, and uh, indeed, uh, this is what happens when one includes the long-range interaction, but not uh, if one does not include the long-range interaction. And uh, uh, the, uh, uh, but you see that the dielectric constant that one predicts in this way is different from the experimental dielectric constant. Uh, and this is again, uh, the, which would be about 80, uh, which is again a problem of the DFT calculation. With that, uh, I uh, just... Uh, 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 give you uh, uh, some uh, uh, final comment. So molecular dynamics with machine learning potential retain the predictive power and accuracy of ab initio molecular dynamics. So you can say accuracy and also 
maybe uh, the inaccuracy of the DFT calculation with numerical efficiently comparable to that of empirical force field relatively relative to empirical force field uh, the potential and the potential long range describe accurately interaction beyond few body moreover uh, the, these uh, deep potential are reactive and can describe formation and breaking of chemical bonds. Uh, in fact, uh, one can envisage a hierarchy of coarse grain model that I bottom up. For instance, DP at the lower level, the potential, the potential long range, and one can also uh, do further coarse graining like uh, in the deep potential coarse graining model that uh, uh, we describe uh, in uh, a few years ago. Um, uh, so this is uh, the, uh, uh, the, 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 the global picture. Um, uh, in uh, uh, currently, uh, yes. I, no, I just say that, uh, yes, uh, we're, we're, we're out of time. Uh, uh, if, if yeah, okay, know. so let's, so you can read it. Uh, uh, you can read it, and I think it's, uh, uh, this is uh, what it is. And thank you for your attention. And sorry for having exceeded a little bit. The no, no, time. you're okay. I just want to uh, have a few, uh, one or two minutes for uh, questions. Uh, okay, so go ahead with the question. Okay, uh, thank you very much, Roberto, for a, for a wonderful talk. Um, so I see in the uh, Q&A uh, and also in the chat that is uh, at least two uh, different uh, People asked uh, if uh, the uh, if the force fields, if the machine learning uh, force fields are uh, able to uh, describe a chemical bond breaking and forming, uh, or if they are reactive. Yes. So uh, uh, in principle, uh, they are able because uh, you can describe uh, breaking and forming of bond uh, with uh, uh, with um, quantum mechanical calculations. So. Uh, obviously, if uh, uh, some uh, breaking or forming of bond uh, uh, correspond to an activated or rare event, uh, you have to uh, uh, devise uh, some special technique to learn uh, uh, this uh, particular, uh, uh, when this happened, to learn from quantum mechanics. But, uh, uh, in principle, the potential is able to describe uh, chemical reaction. On the other hand, uh, as uh, I discuss here, uh, this is the deep potential. The deep potential describes chemical reaction, provided it is uh, suitably trained. Uh, regarding the deep potential long range that I described, uh, because uh, we are using uh, this uh, uh, Vanier uh, centroid, uh, uh, or uh, we are just considering the Vanier center, they are always associated to a particular atom like the oxygen in this water system. Uh, 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 one can describe proton transfer reaction with uh, the potential long range, but not uh, electron transfer reaction in which uh, an electron or a Vanier center is adiabatically transferred between two atoms. This is uh, something for which uh, there is currently work going on in order to uh, uh, overcome this limitation. But uh, in general, all these potential are reactive potential. Um, okay. Yeah, okay. Thanks, Roberto. Um, um, in the interest of time, I think uh, we have to move to uh, Ling Fang's uh, uh, talk. Uh, there are several questions uh, uh, left unanswered in the Q&A. Perhaps, uh, Roberto, if you want to have a look at that. Otherwise, yeah. also Zach yeah. or uh, Ivan might be able to, uh, to help okay. you with that. Okay, so I stop sharing. Uh, and, okay, thank uh, you. Okay. Thank you, Roberto, again, for a wonderful talk.